in some ways because it's packaged nicely and with GUIs and everything else. But uh, what Android was doing though, it's had to comply with the GPL. It had to push some pack, some I don't know packages or maybe just bits of code that do certain things that would be useful for other companies trying to create ebooks and that's uh, e-readers for ebooks. Uh, and that's just the purpose of the GPL to have people contributing back and not just taking. Uh, the problems they had with the Kindle one, well, I have loads of problems, maybe not to Amazon, but the, to the users. So they have this DRM situation, they don't support EPUB, which is supposed to be more portable. Uh, they have the remote deletion issue with famously 1984, that they basically deleted people's books in countries where it was perfectly legal to have them. And it didn't actually even ask the users. They just invaded their devices and deleted stuff from their devices. Um, so with the Kindle, you see, I, I basically, apart from the fact that Amazon pays for it, and I should mention the Mike something, I believe, is the manager of Kindle uh, since about a year, just over a year, and he is a person who came from Microsoft. So Microsoft was making money from Kindle, I think just shortly after a manager used to work for Microsoft was put on top of the uh, of that group. I also think that Amazon pays Microsoft for Red Hat by doing the deal which includes the servers because a lot of the uh, cloud services, whatever they call it, Elastic or you know, EC2 or I, I don't really keep track of all this jargon like clouds and uh, whatever, you know, whatever number of servers they have in Amazon and I think it's one of the biggest distribution out there of Linux uh, uh, of Linux servers, I think Google is one of the biggest, uh, uh, but they basically will pay Microsoft per server, so I don't really know how much money they make out of that. Um, I do know that I wouldn't encourage people to get anything from Amazon now. Uh, they are the neighbors of Microsoft, geographically speaking, and they have loads of staff, and they have, in fact, had loads of staff coming from Microsoft to Amazon all of the past few years, and unless you look at the history of the employment in each one of the managers, you probably won't be aware of that. Well, we'll, uh, we'll move on to our next topic before we go for our first uh, Creative Commons music break, and uh, the next topic I believe we're going to discuss is Google+. Plus. Now, Roy, I would hope you can start us off with this since uh, you uh, you decided on uh, wanting to talk about this, so if you far away and I'll, uh, I'll chip in as, as need be. Yeah, I just want to point something out. The, you mentioned Creative Commons, but not all the tracks are Creative Commons, but they are given away freely by the artists, so it's not necessarily Creative Commons. Uh, the thing that I was going to say about Google+, Plus, and I wrote this in uh, uh, several places before, is I, I'm happy it's around. I think uh, it's good to have uh, real competition, and I think they do get lots of users so far. So uh, one thing I, I think would happen is uh, it's going to force Facebook to try to at least listen to the users and saying, well, look, you know, you should stay with us because we have improved our terms and conditions and whatever. Uh, I know Facebook's got quite a few patents on, they even bought patents on the, the things they deal with, uh, which makes me kind of wonder, maybe they could try and use a patent attack on Google in some ways. I don't think they will, but, but it's possible. Uh, and one of the other thing, though, is... Um, um, well, I can take lots of angles on that. You know, the lobbying, uh, the word lobbying, well, quotes obviously, they were trying to do against Google, basically hiring companies to smear Google, uh, especially yes. when it comes to privacy. And I think that's to do with them knowing that Google would launch a service and their intimidation campaign and trying to tell people, oh, you know, Google cannot be trusted more than Facebook, uh, which calls its users, uh, well, Zuckerberg calls it the user's uh, dump Fox was it was the phrase he used to describe their trust in him. Uh, so they're very infamous for privacy. I don't think I think Google is known for privacy violations, not in the context, not in the context of social networks, but more to do with search. Like they really know what you search for. They keep logs of that and might report to the government. Uh, so so they try to give the impression that Google is not going to provide any more privacy now. Um, I, I look at it from a different angle. I'm just, just thinking this is a uh, case of people putting their stuff, like photos and communications and everything, on somebody else's server, which to some people doesn't make a big difference. But uh, apart from the fact it's proprietary, it runs on top of a uh, Linux servers. But uh, again, it's it's just a service that doesn't put you in control. 
The only control Google, I think, gives you is exports for data and things like that, but even for Facebook, even though it's trying to ban all of the exporters and all kinds of programs that, that make it possible for people to move, uh, it should be still possible. It should still be possible in all sorts of ways to grab your data, to pull your data and put it somewhere else like Google+. Plus. Uh, so. I mean, I've, I've, I've got a couple of views on this. I'm sort of quite excited with Google+, Plus only for uh, to see what it's going to turn out to be and how it's going to operate. I was very impressed with Google Wave, and unfortunately that uh, now transpires to be a, a doomed project. Um, I think uh, Google cut that off uh, quite, a, quite a long time ago. And strangely enough, though, the Google Wave, you can still access it, and as far as I know, that's a tank, still have conversations in it. Uh, I could be wrong there, but I think it was about a week ago I, I logged in just to just have a little look, and it seems to still be functioning, whereas I was led to believe about... Maybe it was about eight months ago, I think, they, they closed the project um, and said they were they they won't continue. I think they put it in Apache, to yeah. be honest. Uh, I'm but, not sure what license they used for it. But, but I, certainly, I certainly was led to believe that the project was just finished in terms of being accessible by the end users. So uh, it came as a surprise that I could still log in. Um, like I said, I didn't particularly to test the functionality of it. So it may well be stripped of all its features now. But um, yes, yeah, so that was quite interesting. I wonder but if they're going to integrate something like that to uh, into Plus, basically, because yeah. they have lots of services and quite a few of them to shut down eventually. Mm. Well, for, for those, for, I mean, for those listening, I didn't ever see what uh, what Wave was. I'll I'll try and explain it, uh, describe it the best I can. Um, if you imagine your standard typical forum uh, on on a web page. Uh, and you imagine that when somebody types, you actually see them typing in real time on your screen. Uh, it was an environment where you could collaborate ideas and you could modify people's text and jump in and add bits. And so it was like a, it was like a real time document that two users or even more could, could communicate with each other on. And it was actually very good. Um, I was very impressed with it. And, um, for the brief time I used it, I think I used it for about a month of its life. I, I thought it was very good, and certainly if they use that technology in Google Plus, there's, there's a thousand and one uses that they could have for that uh, for that there. But the, the the reason why I'm a bit apprehensive about any social networking site, and this isn't just uh, unique to Facebook, it'll be the same for Google Plus, I expect, and many others, is that they seem to entice a lot of users with uh, promises of great times and meeting friends and entertainment. And then to me, they seem to lock these users away from the rest of the net and uh, everybody else. Like, for example, Facebook, I refuse to be part of. As a result of that, I don't, I'm not privy to any conversations that anybody that I know might be having, not that I'm particularly interested. But it's an example of how they take these users, entice them in with gifts and prizes or whatever, and then lock them away from everybody else in order to entice more people in. Um, if I may, Roy, I just want to bring up a little bit of feedback that we had, and I say feedback very, very loosely, but um, we were talking in the last episode, or the episode before, in regards to Facebook, and I made a comment to say that uh, one of the laws of Facebook was it gives uh, people status. Uh, people, Some people mistakenly use Facebook as, as, a, as a status, and you achieve status by getting more friends, because wrongly, uh, people have some people have the impression that uh, becoming uh, very popular with many, many friends makes you a better person, and there's competition there to have more friends, have more fun than your other friends, and stick pictures on your Facebook which make everybody else jealous, and it's all a very contrived, very fake, false, posturing environment like this. Now, whether my comments were taken out of context deliberately, or whether they were just uh, twisted around to fit the agenda of the person making the remark, but there was a suggestion made that, uh, as a result of my comments on Facebook, I was against competition and it's healthy competition that uh, children should engage with. I think I liked them Facebook to the Boy Scouts. And when I did that, I didn't in any way want to suggest that the Boy Scouts, which is a fantastic organisation which uh, offers children the chance to better themselves, is in any way similar to Facebook uh, in any particular way. But the point was, was that Facebook offers the same type of enticements for a, a sort of competition in order to get to the best of the best. Uh, the most followers, the best pictures up on your Facebook site, and the reward is you get the kudos of being the most popular person, and it's a very fake kudos. The competition and proper competition between uh, young people is very, very healthy. I would never seek to suggest that it wasn't. Uh, the, the competition that's in, say, the Boy Scouts, for example, where the sportsmen of the, of the group, the best sportsmen, will get the badge, that's fantastic. But the competition that exists in Facebook is a very different beast. The competition in Facebook, from what I've seen, and certainly from what a lot of people can see in the news and in the papers, is based off 
fostering. It's based off having the most friends. It's based off bullying. It can be based off intimidation. It can even be based off stalking. And these types of competition, I don't think, are healthy for young people or anybody uh, as uh, as it happens. So that was my main point about Facebook and what I perceive the harms to be. Um, and now that I've got off my soapbox, I'll uh, pass it back to the Googles. Uh,